All right, so welcome to episode three of our 5.3 part series. Um, on this episode, we're going to be renaming Dark RP to Star Wars RP. Um, we're going to be making some key Dark RP modification changes, uh, and I'm also going to be running through B whitelist a little bit. So if you're just trying to set up a Dark RP server, you probably want to just skip this video. Um, however, you might still learn some things along the way if you're interested. This can also be applied if you're running um, any any other type of common RP game mode that's based off of Dark RP. Um, so first thing we want to do is we want to jump over to the file management and we want to go over to Gary's mod, game modes, and then here we're going to want to start renaming things. So for Star Wars RP, um, we're going to want to rename this Gary's, sorry, this Dark RP folder to Star Wars RP. Hit enter, and then go into it. Um, now I'm going to delete some things here that aren't needed so that it's a little bit easier to understand. All right, so you can see here we renamed the Ford Star Wars RP. We also need to rename this text file to the exact same Star Wars RP. All, all lowercase, no capitals. Now, go into this uh, text file, and here you'll see the title is Dark RP. Now, here is where you can start putting spaces. Um, I'm going to put spaces and capitals, for example, here. Um, there's no point in changing the author name and stuff like that. You can leave the rest of this, but change the actual title to Star Wars RP. Um, then click return to file manager. Um, come back into, I believe it's the game mode file here. Yeah. Now we're going to need to edit this init and cl underscore init file. Um, just to once again rename this dark RP bit right here to Star Wars RP with spaces and capitals. Once again, leave the version and the author. Um, just save this file. Return to file manager, CL underscore init is the exact same as the init file. It just looks a bit different in here. Um, once again, just Star Wars RP, return to file manager. Now the game mode should be ready to be um, booted to. So um, we've got the Star Wars RP folder in there. You've got Star Wars RP.txt in there. You've got your um, Star Wars RP title. You technically don't need to do this bit. You only need to rename this text file and this folder. Um, but just in here as well, you've got CL underscore init and init.lua, um, which both have the same GM underscore name that we put in the text file. This is the display name that you'll see if you haven't already figured that out when you're looking in the, um, the server browser here. Um, some servers don't put the capitals and stuff here. They literally put it all lowercase everywhere. Um, and that's why sometimes you might see it appears as Star Wars RP, like all lowercase and stuff. But um, it doesn't really matter. So once you've done that, um, just return to the file manager. Um, we'll want to come over to the startup parameters now. And we'll want to change this to Star Wars RP. Just like lowercase, no spaces stuff that we put for the actual folder name. Now I'm going to restart the server and hopefully we should boot up to Star Wars RP. I'm going to come over to the server details tab once again and watch this game mode part. Um, give the server a minute to actually boot up. All right, looks like we booted up to Star Wars RP. So that's good. So now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go through some, some pretty basic stuff with the Dark RP modification add-on that you'll probably want to know about um, if you're doing Star Wars RP. You don't need to rename this add-on, this is fine. Um, but you definitely, if you're running a Star Wars RP server, you want to read fully, the first time you install Dark RP, you want to fully read through this settings file and the disabled.default file. In the disabled.default file, we're going to pretty much disable everything. So I'm going to disable chat sounds because normally it's more serious for Star Wars RP. I'm going to disable events because events in Dark RP is things like earthquakes, um, meteorites, stuff like that. Normally this stuff doesn't trigger anyway, but um, I'm also going to disable Falco's protection here, FPP. 
a lot of people leave this on um, and it's really important to note that if you disable this, people who have a fizz gun will be able to pick up or a tool gun will be able to remove doors, pick up doors or any other person's props. There's basically no prop protection. However, the prop protection is quite an intensive part of Dark RP. Um, so I'm going to disable this because Styles RP is normally quite heavy as it is with things like um, NPCs. Um, because most players won't have a fizz gun and a tool gun and stuff, so we don't really need it. I'm going to disable the uh, F1 menu. I'm going to disable the hit menu because we don't have hitmen. Uh, I'm going to leave the HUD for now. Um, I'm going to leave hunger mod disabled. I'm going to leave player scale enabled because that's kind of a bit of fun. I'm going to disable the, the sleep system. Um, I'm also going to disable F admin. That's the uh, admin menu that you would see in the scoreboard. Um, I'm going to disable that because we have ULX and I just don't really like F admin. You can totally leave that if you like F admin. It's not going to make much of a difference. Um, and then I'm also going to leave animations and chat indicators both enabled. Everything else pretty much is going to be disabled. So we're going to come down here and we're going to get rid of all this default stuff. We're going to disable the cook, the gangsters, the hobos, the mayors, the mob bosses, medics. All of these default weapons need to be disabled. Whoops. Now, um, note that while you're disabling all of these things, you won't need to go through and disable all of this because the food, the hunger mod isn't actually enabled, so you can just save a little bit of time. Go through all this. Oops. Disable this stuff. Disable the agendas. Um, I'm going to leave these default group chats. Um, they probably won't actually be used because we'll um, jobs are disabled, but I'm just going to leave that. Um, disable these demote groups. And then this stuff here you can leave. Um, it's not really that important. It's kind of important, actually. That stuff... Um, fixes quite a few problems so leave that stuff generally speaking unless you know what you're doing um so we've disabled a lot of things now we're going to want to go through to the settings and there's going to be a bunch of settings that i'm going to point out that we're going to definitely want to check out with styles rp um like i said earlier i strongly recommend just reading through this file fully the first time you install dark rp and making sure that you've gone through and configured everything how you want because there's a lot of really useful interesting stuff in here so it's worth just pushing through your ADHD if you can and reading through this whole file that first time. However, I will be pointing out some key things you might want to change. So I'm going to firstly disable sprays because Sour's RP is quite a serious gamer typically. Um, I'm going to make sure that this is uh, enabled because I don't want people being able to see things that they can't buy. Uh, you might want to increase the voice distance so people can hear you when they're standing in lines and stuff. If they're like through a wall, they still won't be able to hear you. Um, I'm gonna go up and change the currency so it appears on the right hand side. Um, and I'm also gonna change the currency symbol from a dollar sign to say credits because that's a bit more realistic for Star Wars RP. Um, for the default weapons, I'm going to get rid of pretty much everything, but I'm going to leave the fizz gun just in case I need to test something in a second. Um, you're probably going to want to get rid of the fizz gun as well for Star Wars RP. And for the admin weapons, I'm also going to get rid of the keypad checker because you don't use keypads in Star Wars RP that much. Um, also, a really important thing if you disable Falco's prop protection, and either way you're going to want to probably disable all this, um, um, set all of this to false pretty much because otherwise people will be able to remove random things with the C menu so set all this to false um, just to lock down the context menu um, another thing which I'm going to enable is the decal cleaner that automatically cleans decals I'm going to disable pistol buying uh, in the F4 menu because we don't want people buying pistols I'm also going to disable iron shot um, which means people don't have to aim before they shoot. It's a little bit annoying. I'm not sure why Dark RP does that by default. I'm going to disable letters because we don't need letters for Star Wars RP. And I'm also going to enable, <clears throat> sorry, disable new respawn, which means that when people change job, they have to respawn. Uh, this is handy for making people spawn in that job spawn location when they change job. 
Um, so it just keeps the RP flow going a little bit easier. So that's some um, key changes that uh, I would recommend making with dark RP modification. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going <clears> to <throat> jump over to be whitelist, which if you're unsure how to install, <clears throat> the first episode in the next three um, sub episodes, I guess, is going to be installing an add-on from Gmod Store. And I'm going to be using be whitelist as the example add-on. So if you want to just pause this video and jump over to the next video, that's going to run through how to install a add-on from Gmod Store. And then when this video comes back, um, we're going to have be whitelist installed and I'm going to run through some basics with be whitelist. So you know how that works. So be back in a minute. I'm going to quickly install by be whitelist and um, we'll carry on. All right, I'm back. I have be whitelist installed. This is going to be focusing on a little bit of be whitelist before I wrap this episode up. So once you've installed be whitelist, you should be able to just access it by typing exclamation mark GAS and then clicking through. And here you'll see that I've re-enabled a few teams and that leads me on to mention something that I forgot. If you do disable all of the base teams, you'll need to change the default team here to something you've got enabled, obviously. Uh, for example, like team example would work here. But I've re-enabled some jobs just for this example because the um, spawn job can't be obviously put behind a whitelist. So um, if you're going to be uh, whitelisting a job or blacklisting a job, depending on what kind of setup you've got, this is where you would just enable that. And then to add people to that list, typically you would come through to this players uh, list right here, find the player that you're looking for, and then you can just click on their name and then you can click to add them to the example team, for example. So here you can see that I've been added to the uh, example team and it has a little nice check to let you know. Um, if you wanna let other people give people jo um, access to teams then you'll need to come over to this operator tab and click on permissions to open Billy's permission system right here and you'll need to add an access group now for example this would list all of your ulx groups so you can do that or you can do it based on team billy's been pretty comprehensive with this so if i'm going to for example let admins manage um pretty much let's just say add all users to the whitelist let's just check that and then I'm going to allow them to remove users from the wireless. And then you'll just click save. And it's pretty much, it's really that simple. Um, you should, no, yeah, that the op options tab you don't really need. So that's how you would let other people um, give people, give people um, whitelist permission. And um, thanks for watching this video. And I hope you have a nice day.